Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now here in my hands, this is the Grands Forge Brook Outdoor Axe, which very many people really, really enjoy. It is one of their favorite Grands Forge Brook models. And for me, I have tried to get my hands on this for a long, long time and finally did. Now, just recently, I was able to bring this on a deep wilderness backpacking trip 10 plus miles into the deep remote mountainous wilderness and use this as literally my only tool to process wood and get a fire started. I greatly, greatly relied on this and it absolutely had to perform when it counted the most. And so unlike other reviews, this is a real practical, real life review. So I have a ton of use footage. I did not edit any of it out minus some of the just pauses in between. So you're pretty much going to see about 100% of the use that I used this for to get my fire started. Now I did use this a little bit more for some additional tasks other than the fire, but you do see and I would say 95% of the use that I use this for. So if you want a lot of field use footage, you are absolutely going to get it in this video. Now you'll notice on the bottom, I am going to annotate. So if you want to skip around and go to different sections, take a look at the bottom of the screen where you'll find markers like this that send you to the next section of the video. And then after all the field use, we're going to come back. I'm going to talk to you about this just a little bit more because I do have some important thoughts and things to share with you. Now, my main thought and consideration, I do want to point out while you're watching the footage, the main thing for me and the only real drawback, this handle is just a little thin down the bottom. So you'll notice in some of the footage, it does tend to spin and twist in my hands, but also where this is not quite flared out as much as I would like, it has a tendency to want to slide out of my hands. And I think you'll notice that in some of the footage, but overall, a great performer, and I really, truly had to rely on this tool. So with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a huge amount of footage to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a lot more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned.
see what happens. You want to light it with, uh, just light it with the lighter? Sure. And some, uh, on a strip of birch. So there you have it, an extensive amount of field use getting to hard work with this outdoor axe. Generally speaking, performing very well and again just a couple of deficiencies. First, again the handle, just a little bit less flare than I would really like and if the bottom just flared out more like some of their other models. I think it would have perfectly indexed and it wouldn't have twisted and it wouldn't have wanted to fly out of my hands. And let me give you an example. We'll draw a couple comparisons to some other models that you may be familiar with. So here I have the Wildlife Hatchet. And when you look here, these are a little different in overall size. In fact, the outdoor axe a little bit longer, the head smaller. It's an interesting and unique shape. And the straight handle, it actually does work very, very well. But where I really want to see the difference is just in the pommel section. So if you took the pommel from the wildlife hatchet and put it on the outdoor axe, in my opinion, this would be almost unstoppable, where you'd end up with that perfect indexing, that perfect flare. And you'll notice again, if you go back to the footage, I had to reset after between four, five, or six strikes. In most cases, I generally couldn't go past like six strikes without re-gripping and resetting on the handle. That's a little bit of a downfall and it tends to lead to more fatigue. Now you may not say I fatigued much because I used it a ton, tons and tons of strikes. I mean, just continuous use, but it really does weigh in in some fatigue at the end of it. So more flare on the handle would have definitely been great. But the fact of the matter is the head is not that big. And again, comparing it against the wildlife hatchet or something like the small forest ax, I mean, you certainly do not get the same overall cutting power, but I would have to say it performed extremely well. I mean, even for some of the larger logs and, and tree trunks where I did significant chopping, you'll see chunks flying. I was able to use this at length without fatiguing because it is light. It is kind of almost tomahawk-like. Um, they call it an ax. It's sort of a hatchet. This is a unique tool. I do like it very much in concept. I would say at this point, if I had to pick between the wildlife hatchet and the outdoor axe, it would be hard to say. Uh, they're both sort of equally compact, little more size, little more heft, but man, this is just a cool little axe. So 
I do have to say I have greatly enjoyed it and it performed extremely well. And so here, as we look at this in detail, giving you just some of the basic specifications, looking at it just in terms of the quality and how this all held up after the significant amount of use. And then we'll wrap this up. So here you can see the one spot where I did get just a little bit of damage, caught myself a nick. So that is a little bit of a chip and a roll right on the bit there. So you will see. I think I probably caught a rock or something like that. I was working very close to the ground and sometimes those things happen. Now I have stropped this just a bit, uh, put it on a ceramic rod, so a fine ceramic rod kind of tried to clean that up. Now, if I was going to try to get that out of there, I would have to actually take quite a bit of metal. I really don't want to do that. I'm pretty much just going to live with it. And to be honest with you, it is not going to affect performance at all. Grants Force Brook reports this as a one pound tool. I weighed it on my own scale. I got one pound, 3.7 ounces. So right around one pound. And it is again, just fairly light and generally nimble, which is absolutely a treat. And another thing, so as we get into some of the measurements, the overall length of the head, just under five inches, the cutting edge, a little over two and a half inches, total length of the handle around 15 inches, and coming with a beautiful veg tanned sheath. Now all of these you'll notice the sheaths are the same. What I've done is I impregnate mine with heavy duty amounts of beeswax to make it a little more durable. It actually darkens it up from what you'll see from the factory. So if you're looking at mine and thinking it's extra dark, well, yes it is. And you'll notice that is the case with all of them. And they all match pretty well at this point. I really like the look. This has been in rain at this point. It's been beat up pretty good. It's hiked miles and miles on my pack and still looks great so the wax itself helps with overall durability a little bit of water resistance and prolongs the life of the mask now the handle i have soaked in boiled linseed oil and you'll notice it's not quite as dark as the rest of these there is a couple of reasons for that first Really, I have treated all of these many, many, many more times than I have the Outdoor Axe. So that's the first thing. Second is these have been used extensively in the field. This really only one time. So the more and more I use it, the darker and darker it will get. And I will continue to treat this. You'll hear a lot of people say, well, you want to treat this with boiled linseed oil once a day for a week, once a week for a month, once a month for a year and pretty much as you need from then on. Have I done that? No, um, I've pretty much coated this four or five times and tried to soak into the head here where this handle goes through the eye and flares out just to keep it tight. Now you'll notice in a lot of cases I was torquing on this and no fear that this would loosen up, no fear that the handle would break. And to be honest with you, if it's gonna break, I'd rather find out and deal with it than to baby my tools. So, I mean, I'm going to use my stuff. I'm going to use it hard. And that was absolutely the case with this outdoor axe. And just a final little detail, you'll notice this was forged by the maker IB. My wildlife hatchet MM, my small forest axe AS, and my Scandinavian forest axe MS. So, all different makers. I mean, the quality for the most part across the entire line, very, very good. And as you look at this outdoor axe versus some of the others, you will sort of see where it falls. I would say, does it really fall in here? Or does it fall more like this? Hard to say. I mean, the head on this, again, is definitely smaller and more compact, a little bit lighter than on the Wildlife Hatchet, but the handle's longer. So it's an interesting axe. I do like the shape. I do like the overall fit in the collection. And I would say it absolutely has a place in my outdoor kit. And so again, the Grants Forest Brook Outdoor Axe. I am absolutely thrilled to have a real practical hard use field test in the deep wilderness relying on this tool at length. Again, you've heard me say it a few times, 
Overall, very, very good. Great durability. I mean, the handle's still looking great. That overstrike guard is critical. Just a little bit of damage. Chip that blade, but hey, you know, that's what's going to come with hard use. And I'd rather have chips on my blade, knowing that I used it, and the tool performed than to not have chips and it's literally just an axe sitting on the wall because you know what what fun is that and i have to say after using this at length it was great fun and a very enjoyable trip so all right guys thanks for stopping by i hope you like what you saw hope you found it a little bit informative if you like what you saw please like share and subscribe and as always thanks for stopping by take care now i'll see you soon